phenomenal. I mean, cutting the weight is hard, but it was something I needed to do at that point in my career. Now I'm at a point where I don't have to do it anymore. You know, uh, it's well documented why I went to 205. That roadblock has been has been out for a while. Kane's not the champ, so I was able to fight for the belt. I won it. Now I'm just enjoying myself as uh, as we keep rolling. DC, you were uh, you tweeted yesterday about all the media you've been doing. Yeah. 16, 16 hours, you said? Yeah, yeah, I've been busy. Days. Yeah. Most you, most you done? No. So I've been doing a lot because in New York City, there's everything everywhere. So whereas I normally would be on the phone a lot, now I've been having to drive all over the city to go in places. It's been fine. It's fine. Uh, it's just long when you have to be on the whole time. You know, you can't show up and give shit interviews. You know, so uh, it's just being on for 16 hours on top of training. I've been, I sparred five rounds on Monday, sparred four rounds yesterday. I mean, I'm still working. So uh, it's been, it's been a little bit tough. Mostly done in, in person on fight week. Most in person, yeah. Usually I'll do an eight-hour day on Monday and be done, but. Right. New York City is a whole different beast, and a lot of people are interested, so I'm blessed. Now that you're, you're here at, at the Garden, you had said that uh, a few weeks ago when they said, hey, headline MSG, that, that's a big deal. Being in this building, what, what, what does that feel like? It's crazy. I just remember uh, being here back in 2003 for the World Championships and being in the locker room and walking out to this floor to compete to almost two years to the day after 9-11 and just walking out and every time we emerge from that tunnel, just USA, USA, and having that pride uh, to represent our country was just an amazing thing to be back um, as a competitor now. It's truly uh, amazing. I mean, even my coaches, you know, walking into Madison Square, seeing the Knicks logo, it's different. They've, we've been everywhere, right? We've been everywhere together as a team. And even them, they were kind of like, wow, it's MSG, you know? You're not a big Knicks guy. No, no, I'm a Rockets guy. But it's fine. I like the Warriors a little bit more now because I, I got to know Draymond Green, so it's cool. That's what you and Derek have in common. Yeah, but Derek said some crazy stuff, man. Derek said, uh, I was told today that Derek said he left New Orleans at 15 or something. And when he left, he left the Saints. So he doesn't care for the Saints. So he gets a little bit extra for that on Saturday. Who is <laughs> Saturday. Both of you guys support that, right? Louisiana loves Daniel Cormier. Uh, the state is, uh, the state's ready to explode. On Saturday night, right before I enter the octagon, LSU will complete uh, their rise, improbable, under the great Ed Orgeron, and beat Alabama and become number one in the rankings. Then I will come here and defend my heavyweight title. And then on Sunday, the Saints will beat the Rams and become the number one seed in the NFC. So big Louisiana weekend, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. But Louisiana's room for DC. Derek Lewis is out here out right there. He has a little bit of a theory as to why you're fighting him right now in November. He said that you're you're scared to fight Tom Jones. <laughs> he thinks that this is an easier fight for you. But do you believe that it's an easier fight for uh, for you? And that's why you're taking this fight now instead of fighting John Jones later on this year or next year. I, I, I was never offered the fight against John Jones. Nobody told me to fight John Jones. I think Derek has said it himself openly that some of the things you take with a grain of salt, some of the things you believe what he's saying. He's uh he's just bullshit. How many things do you believe that, that he says? Because he does say a lot, a lot of things. Like when he says he trains 30 minutes a Don't day, believe now it. he's training more. I believe so he trains harder than that, right? I believe that he is not nearly as hurt as he as, as he pretends to be when he's against the side of the octagon. Derek's a little smarter than you guys think, but the problem is he's smart in a way that you learn when you grow up in, in the the in urban areas, right? He's kind of got a little more street smarts, but I grew up in those same places. I can see right through his facade. He's not a dummy. This guy knows what he's doing. He's trying to trick us all, but don't think that Derek Lewis is some ignorant guy. This is a guy that uh, went to jail as a youth. And honestly, when you go to prison as a kid, especially a young black kid, uh, a lot of people give up on you. And in, in that cell, you tell yourself a lot of things. You say, I'm gonna do better when I get out. I'm gonna be this and I'm gonna be that. And the vast majority of, them, uh, of the guys that do say those things, they never change. They go back and do the same thing. Derek Lewis did, right? 
Derek Lewis became a, a millionaire. Derek Lewis is fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world. There's something different about him. And that's why I know what's in front of me this weekend. So let him try to trick you guys, but pay very close attention to who he really is. He's a smart guy, and uh, he ain't tricking me. He doesn't talk too much about his past and you know, being in jail and stuff. It seems like you know quite a bit about his background. And stuff. I know everything about everybody that I fight. I learn. I research them. They become my focus. They become my life for the time that I'm training for them. I know everything about Derek. And when learning and learning about Derek Lewis, I didn't think, oh, this is gonna be an easier fight. All it made me believe was that it was gonna be tougher than people or the general public may believe. All it made me understand was that him knocking out Alexander Volkov wasn't the exception. It was his expectation because he has fought from the very pits of hell and he scraped his way back up to who he is today. So him winning a fight with 15 seconds left, that doesn't surprise me. This guy won the biggest fight in the world by doing and changing his life path and changing his family's life path. Yeah, I know a lot about Derek Lewis. It's, I, I owe that to myself and I owe that to him uh, in order to pre prepare myself best for him. How are you almost a fan of him now after everything you know, you and knowing more about him? I can, I'm, a, I'm a fan of his story, yes. I, I love the way he fights. I think he's great. I, think, I mean, I'm, I'm a normal guy. I love his Instagram. I think it's hilarious. But I love Dan Henderson. Like, I, I, I've been watching Dan Henderson since I was a kid, aspiring to be him in the Olympics, and look at what I did to him. So I'm gonna go and try to rip Derek Lewis apart. Uh, there are levels to this fight game. I've said this before, and um, I've shown that, that I've, I've competed at a level above most people for a really long time. He pushed his past two opponents, Yanu and Volkov, out way in. So are you expecting him to do that to you on Friday? Uh, no. No, I don't think he'll do that. It's different. I'm serious, it's different. It's different when you're in front of a person, right? You hear the stories of the uh, Anderson Silvas and the John Joneses and the Daniel Cormiers and those guys. You can expect something when, you expect the interaction to be one way, but you're in front of them, it's much different. And I don't anticipate him doing that because when he stands and he looks at me, it's different. And he'll understand and respect all that I, I am and what I've accomplished, he has to. And if he pushes me, then that's fine. Go ahead. Still won't change the fact that you have to get locked into an octagon the very next night. And I'm not gonna stand and take pictures with you like some of these other dudes. I'm gonna get in your face and make you fight. Brock is coming on Saturday? I heard he's coming on Saturday, yeah. I mean, maybe Brock's like looking after his investment. <laughs> maybe he's looking after his investment, hoping maybe I win the fight or, uh, or here to pick a new fight if uh, Derek Lewis is to beat me. This time I will I will advise him to stay out of the octagon because last time he pushed me across the cage and I hate that visual. I hate that that's the visual that's going to be shown in the build up to our fight. This time I will buckle my heels into the con into the mat and I will be ready to push him or smack him upside his head. <laughs> Given what happened last month, though, do you feel that maybe that wouldn't be the best idea? No, it's okay. We're fighters. We'll be fine. Daniel, question people. So I was doing rehab on my hand when they called me about fights and I was like, well, I'm just kind of starting my rehab. Give me a little bit of time to build into this, see how it reacts. You know, you don't start hitting people hard until you have to, right? So during the rehab, I, I kind of anticipated that my hand was still messed up because every time they would squeeze and they would grind on it, I'm like, ah, it still hurts. But it was all the scar tissue. But the moment I got the fight and I started punching, it was fine. So uh, yeah, it's great. I feel good. So did they offer you a fight to fight on this card earlier? They the did. Case? They asked me, would you be interested? I said, well, I'm just starting my rehab. So said, give me some time. Let me see what happens. And who am I going to fight? They said, they never said anybody. Well, we don't know yet. They said, well, we don't know yet. We don't know who you would fight. So this whole idea that it was Stipe and I said no to Stipe is crazy. I beat him in four minutes. And I mean, honestly, like I would fight Stipe Miocic any day of the week wasn't the hardest fight. I don't understand where this idea that it was the hardest fight I had, it wasn't the hardest fight. Like it was, he hit me sometimes, but I mean, just look at him. You know, we were just getting started and the jab was just, the jab was eating him up. His face was so red. It's like we had fought for 25 minutes. I mean, we fought for five minutes. It was just getting going. I would fight Stipe all the time. I have a lot of respect for Stipe. This new uh, person that he's acting like is kind of put off. Yeah.
didn't you say previously though that you respect him so much that you would want a full training? In three training weeks, camp? yes, I would want a full training camp. Yeah. But if, if I was okay seven, eight weeks ago, I would have fought him. But when I said, let me see how my rehab goes, they didn't tell me it was steep. Right? They never said it's you versus Stipe in the rematch in Madison Square Garden in eight weeks. I would have said, okay, let me go see how it works. They just said, we don't know who you're fighting. And plus, I think at that point, there were still options as to who would main event this thing. So they went away from it, thinking that maybe he isn't ready. It was never me. It was never me saying no to any of these guys. When have I ever done that? I mean, I fought everybody at every turn. I fought Rumble, Jones, and Gustafson all in one year. Right? Then I fought Anderson Silva on two days. And then I fought Rumble again after he had just put the share out in 15 seconds. And Volkan Ozdemir looked like he was the man. I fought him. Even though there was so much to lose and not much to gain. And then when Jones came from a suspension, what did I do? I fought him. And then they said, fight Stipe Miocic. I said, okay. It's like I never turn away fights. I fight everybody. And right now, the idea that Derek Lewis is undeserving is so unfair to him. Because in July, he beat the number one contender. In September or October, he beat the number three contender. If you're number two, and you beat one, and you beat three, what does that normally make you? The, 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 the number one contender for the title. He belongs here. So this, this, oh, uh, you know, I, I know what's in front of me. I am very aware of what's in front of me. What fight do you think That's sells cool. better? Do you think this fight sells better than a Stipe rematch with it? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I mean, Stipe and I fought in the middle of July. Uh, there was no football, no, uh, there was no college football, no NFL. Uh, I don't know what sports even going on in the summer. Just baseball? Is it just baseball? That was one of those times that where you would think the buys would really skyrocket, right? And uh, it did. It did okay. I'm not saying it did shit. It did okay. But um, right now, Derek and I are going to fight on Saturday night, and I just told you LSU Alabama's playing. You know, and, and there are big games on Saturday, so hopefully uh, people will tune in because it's going to be a fantastic fight. But um, I don't know. Uh, Derek Lewis has, has gained this type of following that's uh, hard to truly explain. But um, I've been a fan, so I can understand people uh, being drawn to him. If Derek didn't have that close fight, question, be, do you think he gets this opportunity? No. I think Derek Lewis... Uh, I think Derek Lewis went over a lot of people standing in the middle of the octagon in his underwear, talking about his balls being hot. Because I was amused. I was in the arena amused. As a spectator, not as a person that was gonna fight him. But I, I think that when your Instagram followers jump from 300,000 to 1.4 million overnight, it's, it's important, man. That's, that's why people say it's important to understand the stage that you're on. He was on the biggest stage in mixed martial arts history. And he took notice, and he made the most of his moment, and he won this, got this title fight. He does deserve it. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.